to 10 months and three weeks or something. <clears throat> so would you please be seated? There's just a few housekeeping notes to welcome you back here, um, as usual. Uh, everything that you need for the service is in this service sheet. You've got a Bible reading sheet and a pew sheet. Um, we ask that whatever you have touched, you take home with you. Please do not put it back um, on the side where the hymn books usually are. The idea is to have a one-way system so that when it comes to communion, you come up the middle, you go round, and you go down the Lady Chapel, and that's your seat, so that you're not passing to and fro. The idea is to try to keep this two metres distance, which is as you know, almost impossible. But Cyril and I have um, these rather retro face shields. And uh, so you're quite safe. Everything has been sanitised. Um, everything for the communion has only been touched by Cyril, apart from me, Karen and Trey. We are following all the rules laid down by the Church of England and by Westminster Diocese too. And our aim is to keep you as safe as possible. Before we begin our worship, um, I have to tell you that um, Mick Bannister had um, a blood test on Thursday afternoon and had a collapse. He's in Down Valley Hospital. He'd broken his ring finger um, and had to have his wedding ring cut off, which is more upset about than anything. And Betty said, Would I tell everybody? Um, that he's receiving some tests, some treatment, and hopefully they'll find an answer to this problem that he's had for more than 18 months. So please remember, make them stay in your prayers today and in the week to come. It's just lovely to see you all. So it's a big group hug today. That's all we can do. We're going to have a moment of silence before we begin our service today. Father Cyril will now lead us through the service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us uh, for worship as we take to say together the prayer of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all the dark men, and from whom we have secrets are hidden, and the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily glorify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be an advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, from the living and fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who loved us, for he was all that is past, and grant that we may serve him in the of life. To the Lord of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen your goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect for the eighth of the tree. Um, 
made to lower the everlasting God. We beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both the hearts and bodies in the ways of the laws and the works of the commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying if my conscience is confirmed it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and an unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. and be to God. Please stand up for us for me. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. We give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who, who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. It's great to see so many people in church, isn't it? It's really good. We've had a difficult last few years, as all of you are aware, what well, with Lawrence leaving and then Gary. And we've had a, a steady force with us, guiding us and supporting us all the way through this. And the two church wardens, and Marion and the Archdeacon, We've all been discussing the way forward for our church and we interviewed somebody for a job a couple of weeks ago and it was approved by the bishop last week. So we have a new vicar. Would you like to stand up still? I'd like to introduce you to Cyril Showers. A new parish priest. Oh. 
by the grace of God, I will not let you down. But as I said, there will be a time when I'm fully imposed and I shall give a um, proper welcome and um, to thank you especially on behalf of um, Denisha and Delia. I thank you very much and we look forward to, to the future. Thank you. Our personal blessings go with you in these weeks um, before you're installed at the beginning of September. And it will be very different to the licensings that we've had here before because it will all be done um, on computer by Zoom. Uh, but we will celebrate the next day. We'll be together. And hopefully, you know, there may be just a little bit of easing of all the lockdown. And um, we may be able to get a few more people in church. So we just pray for you at this time. And I think we need a moment of thanksgiving, a moment of silence, and a moment to pray for Cyril, but also for Denisha and for Delia and for their wider family. Because I know that Cyril would be the first one to say that without the support of everybody, um, he wouldn't be where he is now. May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a bit of peace and quiet. That's all Jesus wants. He just needs some space for prayer and thought after hearing of the news of the death of John the Baptist. And the crowds follow him. He's like today's celebra celebrities, you know, he's surrounded by the paparazzi, the media, and the demands of the planet. Yet he has compassion on them, puts their needs before his own, begins preaching and teaching and healing, and still they are coming over hills, round the paths, more and more people, men and women and children. The hours go by and the disciples are concerned that the crowds are getting restless. You know what they say, hungry people are angry people. And the response of the disciples is, <laughs> just send them away, let them get their own food. The problem is too great for them to deal with, and they must be qualified. As Jesus tells the disciples, you give them something to eat. So just five loaves and two fish are produced from the crowd. Jesus blesses the food and breaks it. The disciples serve the people. Everybody's fed, and then there's some left over. And this is one of the best known Bible stories. But today we consider the deeper meanings about leadership, knowing what to do in a crisis, about our responsibility to identify need and care for others first, about excuses and not enough food and too many people, and our own excuses so much to do and not enough time. Has that been our experience in these past few months as we face the unimaginable? Like the disciples, we too have wondered how could we make a difference? Was anything worth the effort? The world so large with so many problems, there seemed to be no end to this pandemic. How could we change it? And even should we? And could we be bothered? In today's reading, 
Jesus shows us that we just need to use what we have. Put some heart and some faith and some soul behind it and then watch the miracles take place. Yet how can all these 5,000 people be fed with just five loaves and two fish? Well, some say it's a miracle of redistribution with no one willing to give up their packed lunch until Jesus starts sharing this meagre little offering and it inspires everyone to share their own and to share equally and fairly, leading by the example of unselfishness. Redistributed, reordered, so that everyone is taken care of. Can we imagine a world like that? We've seen some evidence these past months. Tide Hope Food Bank, sometimes Debbie and her team have fed 130 or 140 people on a Wednesday. Shopping for anyone, daily phone calls, knitting hearts for the victims and their families for the hospitals, headbands with buttons on to stop sore ears from masks. We might all need some of those before the day is out. A church prayer chain, school for vulnerable, the children of key workers, clap for carers, time to appreciate God's creation and get in touch with our creative and spiritual self. And the sheer hard work and dedication of the ministry team and the church wardens here. Not always seen, not always heard, but beavering away underground in all sorts of ways. It's been pretty tiring. It's been frustrating. And at times it has been most incredibly sad. But you know, we try to keep smiling. church website, keeping everyone up to date. My thanks to Amanda for doing that. Cyril's weekly online service, brought to you live from here this morning. We need to say thank you to Cyril and to Dina and Denisha for sorting that out every Sunday as we waited for the clock to tick to a minute to ten. We've had so many contacts with previously unknown people reaching out to everyone with God's love and compassion. But the truth is that things are not evenly spread in our world. Most of us, even if we're not wealthy, have so much, so many blessings, while others go with hardly anything at all. Jesus' action with the thousands of people, even he evens things out, but they are radical and they are revolutionary. And that's two words I want you to remember this morning, radical and revolutionary. For following Jesus is a radical lifestyle. And Jesus asks if we are willing to do the same. Following Jesus, we're asked to be willing to give up some of what we have so that others in need might benefit. Are we willing to give out of what God has given to us? Time talents and money too. You know, these are life's tough questions, but Jesus encourages us, saying, give your five loaves and your two little fish, and I will feed thousands with them. So we don't ever act alone, but with God in Christ. Give what you can in God's name, time or talent or money, and just watch as God sets to work. And so today we give thanks to God for the appointment of Cyril as our priest. We celebrate, we smile, and we commit ourselves to working with him as a team. You see, miracles can happen, and miracles do happen. In God's kingdom, none are turned away. Everyone is full, no one is in need. Individuals can do great things by sharing what they have. And we know that you 
so, and the gentle ways and a strong character will continue to lead us to do that. And we know that you will lead us with compassion, with enthusiasm, and with a listening ear. For the sum is greater than the parts, and the small portion is turning into much, much more than enough to go around. So is this the answer to world poverty and famine, to the world's distress and fear, to loneliness and depression, and to the needs of others, and to the growth of God's kingdom in this place? Is the answer not just in charitable giving, but in action, the action of unselfishness? And is this the message that we joyfully take with us today from this service? service really shared so much joy, so much happiness, and isn't it good to see people's faces instead of the famous door stopping from two metres away. Amen. going to pray for the church and for the Lord, and we're going to thank God for his goodness. So let us pray. Dear God, it's just so good to be get together again today, and we've met again. I remember the words of that song, we will meet again, and indeed we have. So we give you thanks and praise that we gather after so many traumatic weeks. We give you thanks for all our blessings in the midst of so much angst and so many fears. We pray that you will help us to cope with this new normal way of praising you as we learn to live our lives in a new way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, when you open your hand, you satisfy this hunger and this thirst of every living thing. And so we look to you whenever we are in need, trusting in your love and your abundant goodness. As Jesus once fed the hungry crowds with five loaves and two small fish, we ask that you would again fill those who are empty. Pour out your spirit on all who hunger and thirst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are physically hungry, for those who are facing critical food shortages, who are suffering the effects of malnutrition and starvation, and watching helplessly as loved ones die. Just give you thanks, Lord, for Debbie and the volunteers at the High Coast Food Bank. We pray for all those who've lost jobs, lost homes, lost all hope. And we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are empty emotionally, who are lonely, who long for companionship and love, those who are caught in the grip of depression or overwhelmed with grief. We pray for those who've died and to remember those whose anniversaries are this way, remembering before you Alistair MacLeod, who died a few weeks ago. At the anniversary of your death, we remember Peter Turney. Eric James Cairns, MBE, Joyce Church, Wendy Powell, Tom Schaefer, Don Usherwood, Gloria Thayer, Raymond Ballard, and Roy Kerr. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we pray for those who are spiritually empty, who are troubled but don't know where to turn who are longing for purpose and meaning, but don't know where to look. Who need you, but do not yet know you. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. And so we praise you for all your abundant goodness in our lives. Pour out your spirit on us as well. Fill us with your compassion and love, so that we would willingly share some of our abundance with those who have need. Pray for all those on our intercessions list here. Remember especially today, Nick and 
that to be funded. And remember, those whose needs are known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And so finally, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise for the appointment of Cyril as priest of this parish. Pray for his ministry among us, that he may show thee to Cyril's wider family and friends. And we remember all those in Cyril's life who have walked with him in his journey of faith, encouraging, teaching by word and example as he followed you in faith. And we ask your blessing on all that lies ahead of him as he prepares to be installed in September. And so in a silent moment we share with you our worries and our sadness, our joys and our thanksgiving. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace, and one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Let us endeavor to keep the spirit in the bond of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. In our own usual way, let us turn around and wish each other peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music 
of your praises. In the fullness of time, we made all in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, the angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven. We may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our enemies, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As the mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From then you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, to whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. Who on the nights before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread. He gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave me thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come to you. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these are the gifts of creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. Paul's and St. Mark's, all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory of God be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On our seed in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are not we are not the Lord, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our sin, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the Lord, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. So he said, Lord, and I shall be healed. We do not please you to come to this your table and ask the Lord, trusting in your own righteousness, but in your mindful and great mercies. 
we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowds under your table. But you are the Savior, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us death and gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dead Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood.
Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to come and to speak. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes that have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body, be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies. We are living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your spirit. To live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Margaret, have you played the one of six? Oh. Difficult to know what to say. It's so emotional, isn't it? Just to be here and just to be meeting and to be sharing bread again. And um, just so lovely to see you. We're very grateful for your. Um, what are we grateful for? We're grateful that you all well and here to see you. Yeah, we're grateful that, that you're just following all the guidelines, helping us to follow what the Church of England has said that we must do. And as hard as that is, um, it's pretty difficult for us too, because I could tell you. These shields actually distort every word that you look at. Yeah. So it's a look at, it's like sort of looking, when we're reading, it's like looking through that sort of um, wavy glass. You know? So bear with us while we struggle with these shields. Um, everything that you need is on your pew sheet today. So please take your pew sheet with you and all your other bits and pieces of paperwork. Uh, we'll be meeting again at 9.30, our new time, next week. And of course, next week it won't be quite so strange. We all know a little bit more about what we're doing. Just keep up to date with us on our website, on our Facebook page, or by contacting us on those phone numbers that you've got there at the bottom of the pew sheet. But we just give thanks for today. Amen. Thank you very much, Marion. I would just, just like to echo those words. I mean, it's so nice to see you. And on a personal note, I'm very delighted to be here standing as your, um, as your priest elect. Um, it, it is such a dream come true. I mean, when we walked in on, um, on that very cold um, December morning, um, Marion welcomed us into this church. Little did we know that almost 200 years on, this would happen. So once again, we are extremely delighted to be here. Um, as I say, we're looking forward to be with you, um, your priest, your your leader. But as Marion said, it's going to be a teamwork, and um, we, we just can't wait to start. And I'm just going to leave you with, with the words of Nehemiah: "Come, let us build." And that's what we are going to be doing. We will work together as a team. By the grace of God. So please buy his for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of the Son Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.